Just be honest, open, and things honestly are easier if you do that. There needs mm -hmm. to be trust in this because you guys are putting content out of each other on the internet for the entire world to see. Welcome back to On The Horizon. This is Melrose Michaels. I am your host, and I'm here to share what's worked for me in building my adult creator business to try to make building yours just a little bit easier. Let's get into today's episode. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We are about to dive into the fascinating world of an adult content creation guest who is redefining beauty standards and champion inclusivity. Known for their captivating goth curvy aesthetic and a strong presence on all popular platforms, our guest has built a unique and powerful brand. So get ready to be inspired by their journey, insights, and the artistry behind their work. Zuri Love is a non-binary adult creator and professional girlfriend known for their goth curvy aesthetic. They're active on platforms like OnlyFans and social, of course, where they connect with their audience and collaborate with other creators. Zuri Love emphasizes the importance of building a professional online presence and staying engaged with fans through authenticity. Zuri, thank you so much for coming on and taking the time to hang out with me today. Thank you for having me on. I'm so happy to be here. I, I think that for a lot of the creators that tune into our stuff, one of the things that I love to start with with these spaces is kind of setting the tone for like your own personal journey into adult content creation and kind of like what influenced your work as a whole. So if you might, maybe could give us a little background on that. Yeah, of course. I started um, doing like content creation in the midst of being an escort. So um, that started actually when OnlyFans started. Right when they came out, I hopped on there. And yeah, it started from there. And a lot of my influences um, that I saw, especially in terms of like the Twitterverse, back when Twitter used to be, you know, not how it is now. Um, <laughs> you could find lots of people without everybody being shadow banned. Um, Anna Fox was one of my biggest inspirations. Um, same with Avery Jane. She's an inspiration as well. Um, and yeah, I just, I started from there and I'm like, just, I have the goth, like curvy, like aesthetic. Um, I'm a big nightmare for christmas fan even though i hate that man tim burton um, <laughs> <laughs> um and just the goth aesthetic in general like makeup um and also being a punk and being against like a lot of things that deter people like us the powers that be i'm a rebel so that also is definitely seen in my content and my tweets i've definitely come across like some of your tweets for sure that give off that rebel vibe <laughs> Like that comes across. What do you think is the reason that you kind of carry this like rebel essence? I think it's so awesome. Like I, I gravitate towards people like that. Well, thanks. Um, honestly, it's probably because I was born like very violently into the world. Um, like I'm adopted and I was born like drug addicted, and my very existence, like as like a black person, is rebellious. I'm just a radicalized, rebellious person who believes in a world where everybody can, you know, live in peace and have access to clean water. And um, and I was raised by a single mother um, my whole life. So I'm just a very independent person and seeing her kick ass my entire life and you know try to uplift me and not live the life that she lived was pretty awesome and also pretty sad to see so i'm just that type of person who like wants better for the world and for everybody regardless of where you come from yeah i love that i can feel that i think that a lot of the people in our community have have a story where they had to overcome a lot, um, especially just being in a marginalized community as, as sex workers as a whole. 
And I think a lot of that too comes out in our art. Like when it comes to the content we create, like there's an essence of that. And with your with your content, especially the aesthetic and the brand, like how did you develop this? Because it's very unique to you and it's not something that you come across often when, in terms of content creators. Like where did the inspiration for the entire vibe and essence of Zuri Love kind of gravitate from? Honestly, it gravitates from me. <laughs> Because this is just how I am. Like, um, yes, it is a persona because Zuri is not like, you know, obviously like first name. A lot of this person, Zuri Love, is also me. Like, it's me. And from my life and what I've experienced and what, like, I like to wear and how I move through the world in general. And a lot of it also is inspired from, like, just things that I've watched and grew watching like scooby-doo like the hex girls like that's that's goth as fuck like the nightmare for christmas i already said that Coraline, um vincent price um frankenstein um all of the old monster movies i'm very much into horror and horror, so that's the thing i'm very much like in tune with um and just the darker thick aesthetic um even if like even with like, like say like for example like if i made my own house it would be goth as hell and it would be decked out in the most vintage shit you would ever see so uh, yeah a lot of it stems from yeah like me myself what i've grown up with and so it's always coming back to my mom and also my grandma because they're also big fans of halloween yeah i'm a big fan of halloween and so I bring that into my content as well. Cause I'm a spooky king. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's funny because you're mentioning so many of my favorite movies. I was my birthday is actually on Halloween, so <gasps> yeah. <laughs> so I uh, grew up like watching Nightmare Before Christmas. It was our like big Christmas movie, and I always, as a kid, I thought it was for my birthday. Like they were making the movie for my birthday. I and, uh, love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh so it's so funny. <laughs> Um, but I like that you you have kind of a, like, you have overlap or, like, bleed between, like, the persona of Sur Suri Love and then the reality of, of you as a person. Because I feel that, too, like, when I discuss a lot, oftentimes with creators about having, you know, your creator face or your persona, like, I feel very much like I am, you know, I am Melrose the brand. Like, there's not a lot of difference. Maybe I'm not as, like... I guess energized or on or like charismatic in real life all the time just because energy mm -hmm. is you know a resource but um overall I, f I feel very much like they're one and the same so i really i gravitate towards what you're saying on that because i feel very similarly yes and i can see that um as well and i i see it with a lot of my um a lot of my colleagues and also like my friends who are also my colleagues yeah i and you're mentioning your colleagues you've you've done a ton of collaborations with other creators how do you choose your collaborations honestly i go by like gut feelings vibes and i think it's gonna like sell but mostly like mm -hmm. i just i like everybody um for the most part unless you're like obviously a piece of shit and i've heard things about you i'm not doing that um <laughs> but yeah it's mostly like by vibes and like personality um and yes, it, it does have to do with like marketability because not everybody's going to want to have me in their videos and that's okay because if it's not going to sell, it's not going to sell. I can't be pressed about that. Yeah. Because there's other things to worry about and other people to work with. Um, but yeah, I do it I, I do it by that. And so far, I've had a pretty great time and have had some great collabs. What, what was your most memorable collaboration? Because I, I also saw your work with um, Crash Pad, which I thought was really cool. Yes, I love Crash Pad. I hope to see them again soon. Um, honestly, the first one I did with them was one of my most memorable shoots. Memorable shoots because um, it was my first one, and I was shooketh because um, they're my favorite like <laughs> queer like porn company, and they deserve all their accolades. Um, mm -hmm. But one of my other favorite and memorable shoots was with Collective Corruption. Um, when I shot with Mickey Maud, who's amazing. He's an amazing performer. Mm -hmm. um, and The Collective is also like a great company. Um, I would 10 out of 10 would work with them again. Um, but I'm very much into BDSM and that's like a part of me. So 
the fact that I got to work with them who like are all like amazing and talented and experienced in their own right like was pretty cool yeah no absolutely and even some of my favorites too Mickey Mott is amazing also like huge King Noir fan Jet Setting Jasmine fan like the stuff that they put out is just so beautiful yes I want to work with them so bad me and King have been trying to work together forever <laughs> I asked King if he would put me in the trunk of a car he said yeah I know I really hope I won't <laughs> I'm I just crying for you because I want him to abduct me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, this, is, this is the consent on record. I wonder if this counts. <laughs> right? It's like, King, I give my um, consent. We give our... <laughs> <laughs> um, if you want to ask, because obviously we all have our, our separate goals and things, is there any content type that you're hoping to make this year or maybe like a different theme outside something that you've normally done? I really, 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 really want to do something cowboy themed. Um, I'm very into Westerns and have been for a long time. So that's something I really want to like put like my money and effort into. And I want it to be like black and brown and queer and well, everybody because, you know, everybody was cowboys back then. But a lot of us were black and brown and like also Mm -hmm. um asian like i think specifically like chinese um at least in my area because i'm from california i'm from socal i was born and raised in los angeles our history over here you know we were making the railroads and a lot of us were um but not just in california like it that's like all over um because you know they all exist all over the united states um but for here specifically i wanted to like make it like authentic to california because this is my home that's so cool i want to kind of talk about safety measures in adult because obviously there's importance in safety and consent in our work um Mm -hmm. but i'm wondering how do you ensure all parties involved are like comfortable respected because you are doing these collaborations and obviously looking to do um future ones and i think a lot of the creators that come into our space really don't know how to articulate that they want to collab or go about being safe in their collabs just for the discomfort of hard conversations so what advice would you give around around that topic for creators listening Um, I honestly would just like take a deep breath and just be honest. Um, I know it sucks like because, you know, having conversations and like confronting things can be uncomfortable, but you just have to do it. You just have to do it. Like, and if you need to talk to somebody about it before you do it, that's okay too. Like, but you have to talk about these things. Conversations are important Um, and stating your boundaries and what you're comfortable with you know, I asking questions. I ask a lot of questions. Like I am like consent king. Like, please like tell me if you're like uncomfortable. Like I'm also really good at catching the vibe and reading body language. Like I'm also like on the autism spectrum. So I'm very direct. So if I have an issue or I feel that there's going to be an issue, I'm going to tell you. So yeah, that's, that's my advice is to just be honest, open, like, and things honestly are easier if you do that. Because once you lie or like, admit the truth like things are just going to get worse because why lie yeah yeah it just makes it just again it makes things worse and nobody's happy and then nobody feels safe because nobody can trust you there needs to be trust in this because you guys are putting content out of each other on the internet for the entire world to see (laughs) no big deal (laughs) you're right no big deal nothing crazy (laughs) so Um, conversations yeah it's it's funny because like when i first got into adult and first started doing collabs that was like premium snapchat days really and premium snapchat was kind of seen as like this like touch and go like shooting content on the fly because it wasn't like big cameras it wasn't set it was like just cell phones and snapchat you know yeah so there wasn't a ton of those conversations happening it was like oh you're a creator i'm a creator do you want to you know film a show and I know now because uh, coming from kind of that background of being solo cam girl, then solo creator, then Snapchat girl, that it was like, it was very difficult at first for me to have these conversations when I went into proper collabs for like the OnlyFans era when that started picking up. And I think that what helped me just like deal with that was this idea of professionalism. Like if I'm a professional performer, I would be able to come on set or come into the, a space and have these conversations. And if I didn't, then I would look less professional because the professionals are having these conversations. So like that gave me a little comfort, I think, in the beginning was to be like, well, this is what a professional does. And if I want to be seen as professional, I should have no issue having these conversations. Exactly. 
for for you on the business side of things like being an adult creator obviously you have full service you have all this like kind of plethora of, of niches and adult what are the things that you would say set you apart as a professional like things that you're doing whether that's like managing finances or documents or legal considerations what what things do you really focus on for your business hmm, honestly i really focus on the keeping my documents <laughs> in check as much as physically possible because the internet be trifling like for example i was doing some 2257s and it was on my phone and i'm i learned my lesson not to do it just on the phone and to have the paper actual physical form because going back into that it disappeared and now i have to get somebody's fucking id and shit all over again so yeah annoying but now yeah. again learn my lesson um keep things in paper as usual like i do with everything else yeah yeah um that's also my biggest the backup aspect yeah yes also oh my god thank you for saying that because i also have um i refound my hard drive because when i had moved down um a few months ago to take care of my grandma i had lost it in the move and i just recently found it Oof. so i'm so glad you found it me too because i was crying <laughs> I was so upset. I was like, where the hell did this thing go? So I found it and I'm backing up my stuff as soon as physically possible. Um, it's just where I am right now at my grandma's. Um, she has the crappiest internet I've ever experienced in my life. Um, so I'm working on getting that fixed because otherwise making content and uploading it has become a huge issue. Um, so that's on the agenda. Um, but yeah, keeping your stuff backed up and in physical form and keeping folders um, and keeping it in safe places where it's not going to get water damaged in the event that happens. Yeah, do that. <laughs> That's something yes. that I take a lot of pride in is that I have like journals and like folders now because I, I have ADHD. It didn't used to be like this um, of where it's a lot easier for me, to, for me to find stuff now. Now with my move, it's a little wonky at the moment because I moved and things are a little scattered, but it's still for the most part together. If you're enjoying this podcast episode so far, please take one moment to share it with another one of your adult content creator friends, because you know what the rule is here. We do not gatekeep and we want to make as many adult creators businesses as easy as possible. And you sharing this episode with them might do exactly that. Thanks so much in advance. That's no, that's excellent advice. And that's huge. I have I'm still partially in boxes myself at the moment. So I know how stressful that is, especially to think that you might have like actually misplaced something of so much importance. I can't imagine how stressful that was. Um, yeah, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's just speaking of stress, like one of the huge common denominators that I think adult creators and performers and full service workers are struggling with at the moment is really this this concept around mental health, you know, like how their work impacts their mental health and ways that they can cope when mental health is a struggle. What would you maybe share with creators that are listening around that topic and sentiment? Or if you have a personal story that you're open to sharing around that topic? Um, yeah, well, honestly, like, well, I've been honest about it, like the past couple months, but um, my mental health has been you know, pretty interesting because I was taking care of my grandma from like February until April 10th and then she died. And I literally like gave up my life up in the Bay Area to come and take care of her like while simultaneously like trying to like do porn and yeah. be a full service worker and all the other things that I do. And that takes a toll on you. Even before I went down here, it was taking a toll on me because I was worried about her worried about what my mother was going to do in the event that she needed help, which she ended up needing. Um, also dealing with the ins and outs of my job and realizing that my job is literally under attack right now. All of our jobs. So yeah, that's been really, really hard, especially like people seeing me as human because I didn't want to talk about this at all on the internet. I did not want to bring this to Twitter. I didn't want to bring this to social media, but I couldn't lie about what I was doing because I was going to be in an entirely different place than where I usually am, which is Oakland, because I made that sacrifice because I don't have a lot of family. And 
My grandma did not give a flying shit what I did. She knew everything about this job that I did because I told her and she did not care. So if you have a support system, but you feel like you're alone, like to everybody in here, reach out to them. Tell them how you feel. I know it's hard because I literally like sometimes like I disappear um, and don't want to talk to anybody. But isolating yourself is not the way to go, especially not in this industry, because we're already isolated. Most of the world doesn't think that we deserve to even be here. So having support and friends and loved ones outside of this job as well is very important because we are like, we're all cool and awesome. And I, I love sex workers. Like, I think we're some of the coolest, raddest, kindest people, but we get a lot of shit. So speaking up when you need assistance, when you need guidance, when you need love, kindness, like there's nothing wrong with that. Please do it because I don't want to lose any more of y'all and neither do my friends like who know what I do. Everybody in my life knows what I do and what is going on. So open, open your mouth. I know it's hard. Like, and I say that with love because it's been really hard for me to open my mouth sometimes. Yeah. Th that's well, first off, I'm sorry for your loss. I can't imagine how hard that is, especially for to be someone who, you know, you were close to and had supported you so much. It's hard to find people in real life that can support you in, in your work. Like, I know that's a privilege. I, I'm lucky enough to have that privilege and, and be surrounded by people who do support me. And um, I know that not everyone has that. So I think having each other inside our community is really important. And to your point about speaking up, that is so hard to do. Like I'm in a phase myself where being vulnerable is like this whole new uncharted territory. Like even, even just in trying to film this vlog for Sex Work CEO that I've been working on for months, like just putting stuff out there about my real life and real things that are going on and struggling is so uncomfortable. So to speak on something that's so life-changing and personal and be public and also to to be a creator of your size and be like, hey, I, I'm, I wasn't okay for a while and sometimes I disappear. Like that gives almost this permission, I guess, so to speak to other creators to be like, oh, like even they struggle, even even them at their level with their, you know, years in the business and, and whatever achievements, like even they're struggling. I think it makes it feel okay to some degree, you know, like, oh, we're gonna be okay. Yes, exactly. Like, because we're all human and have emotions and flaws and being vulnerable sucks, especially like, I'm sorry, like in this day and age and on and on fucking this internet, like being vulnerable is literally like could be the worst and the best thing because you're either going to get people who are going to come out the woodworks supporting you like or they're going to come out the woodworks dogging you and being like scum of the earth and saying oh like what you can't pull yourself up like what about this what about this resource have you tried this have you tried that when in reality no one knows what you're going through until they do yeah. or they don't at all so yeah yeah i'm just i'm here to i think one of my purposes on this earth is to like spread joy and love and resources community because the world needs more of that we're honestly in the situations we are because there's no fucking actual real love and no magic left in this world it's gone but we can bring it back i believe that that's why we're all fighting so hard that's why we're literally all screaming like at the world and the powers that be that no we're not going to give up not in my lifetime at least i'm not at that point yet where i want to give up because I may not be having children, but I have I have nephews to help raise and who are going to live in this world along with me when all the boomers are dead. So <laughs> <laughs> no, this is this is such an important conversation. It, and it comes we're having, you know, this talk even on the tail end, like uh, at X visit this week, yeah. I interviewed Alo and we we're just talking about this fight in almost every panel this fight and conversation about this war on our industry keeps coming up because it's the single most important thing that we're up against right now. And it's, so I get so frustrated to some extent because I'm like, I don't know why everyone isn't as mad or as loud or as, 
you know, fired up because like this is this is the last one. Like we have to win this one. Exactly. Like, we have to. And it's not just our fight. It's going to be their fight, too, because once they're done with us, they're coming for everybody else. Yeah. Like, yeah. And that's why Instagram and Facebook and all of these sites are like so censoring now because they're clearly not listening to us and just it's a money thing. Like, yeah. So I'm like, and I, I've, I've kept telling my friends and everybody in my life, I'm like, you're y'all are next. Like, so mm -hmm. let's all band together, please, because it's getting real scary. Yeah, no, it really is. That's why I was sending the link to oppose the legislation, age verification legislation where you can just click whatever state you're in, like, and it'll autofill the uh, the opposing statement and you just sign your name and, like, explaining to them how to do it. It's going to take you three seconds. Like, this is important yes. because it's not just, like, my freedom on the internet. It's also yours. <laughs> and and it, it extends so much beyond porn. I, I want to ask, because we can go on, I think that this is pretty clearly one of the biggest challenges we're facing uh, as performers and in, in adult right now, but... In terms of like rewards, um, what do you feel like the most rewarding aspect of your work is? Honestly, the most rewarding aspect is like knowing I make people happy. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I make a lot of people happy, and I take pride in that because I, 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 I love I love my job, and I'm really grateful and privileged to, to love my job, and I've done a bunch of things in my life and I'm only 29 but like I've worked in an escape room I've worked at the Renaissance Fair for three years um I was a dog bather I used to be a page for a day and have been on like Warner Brothers set I've done a yeah I've done a bunch of things like I've been a sugar baby that's how actually I started getting into sex work is being a sugar baby like mm. at a very young age and I'm not gonna say because a lot of people already know anyways um yeah when you are like when you have a single mother and no other familial support and you're working since you were 15 in high school like i worked in my school's cafeteria like to make money because i didn't have anybody else to ask for money so yeah i started working early and then i didn't even start doing like this work until technically like 17 18 years old i was gonna um asked too because this is something we get asked a lot um especially in dms on sex work ceos kind of about this idea around imposter syndrome do you ever feel that oh i hella have imposter syndrome how do you cope like how, how, what is your strategy for that if you have one hmm. honestly like once i start having like those feelings i just start scrolling through the things that i've done that's what i start doing i start going back in my photos and in my twitter and my other social medias and just looking at the things that i've done and a lot of the time i find the accomplishments because i've documented them like for example something that like i'm proud of that i did was the fact that like i shot with crash pad for a third time and that um film has gone to multiple like film, sex film festivals, like all over the country and the world. So whenever I'm like, you're literally garbage, I'm like, you literally, you're, you're, some of your shit got around the planet. Yeah. Because people liked it. So yeah, sometimes I just have to remind myself that way. I also like ask some people, I'm like, hey, can you, can you like, do you have space to like, you know, boost me up a little and remind me that I'm not a piece of shit? Um, and that really helps. Like, I'm happy to have like a support system in my life, like, and reminders that like, yeah, like you may be feeling crappy right now, but you are still that bitch and you will continue to be that bitch. I love that. I love that. I love that you started by saying like, you kind of, you look for evidence of your achievements. That's usually that's the first thing I try to do too, is like reflect on what I've the things I've done and been like, well, if, if you really weren't, if you were really a fraud, like you couldn't have done that, like that proof almost to yourself, uh, that helps a lot. I don't know how to describe it. That helps a lot. Yes. It, I also don't know how to describe it, but you're a hundred percent correct. Um, cause it, imposter syndrome sits with me a lot, like almost like daily. So, yeah. um, it's nice to know that, like, I'm not alone because a lot of my colleagues and friends have imposter syndrome, too. So I hype them up as well. And 
you know, we just go back and forth doing that. Not even just like in my person, not even just like in my work life, in my personal life as well. Um, cause what are friends for, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because like, I never feel it worse than when I do the workshops at X-Quiz because then creators are coming up to me and they're saying like how much, you know, sex works here has helped or, or the information's invaluable. And I'm like, in my head, just like the negative self-talk, I'm like, no, it couldn't have been helpful. Like, no, oh that's my God. they're just saying that because they're in front of me. Like, you just have that weird feedback loop. And so like, and I also get so uncomfortable when people compliment me. Like, it makes me wickly. I don't know what to say. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like that, yeah, it's so funny. But um, yeah, the, the the evidence and also, like you said, having the support system really helps like to come back from even exes in the conferences and have friends be like, oh, wow, I saw this on Twitter. Someone was talking about the, the workshop or someone was talking about the ALO interview or or whatever. And they said it was really great. I was like, oh, my God, like that. That means a lot. It's so validating. Yes, it's it's oh, my gosh. Yes, that's that's the word. It's so validating. As speaking of experts, you were there. I didn't see you. I don't know where you were hiding. Um, Me neither. But, <laughs> but how was your experience? How did you like the conference? What were your thoughts, takeaways? Um, honestly, they could have done way better with like just a few things. Like, for example, going to get your badges. Like, as someone who goes to conventions like for fun like anime conventions, like horror conventions. Like I'm going to Monster Palooza next week. Um What's this? <laughs> like I don't understand why they can't just send us our badges like everybody else instead of cramming us into a hot room that's probably like over eighty degrees at that point, no air conditioning, in the middle of South Beach, Miami, where outside the humidity is so bad, I'm sweating like I'm sweating so bad that it's dripping down my legs. Yeah, that was just yeah, frustration. Was nuts. Yeah, that or at least stagger us. Yeah, at least stagger us. So no, not everybody and their mother is in there all up on each other. And honestly, let's be real. With like COVID happening, I'm sorry, my ass was triggered. Like I was like, mm, this is, bleh. I want to vomit. Um, but it was fine. I didn't get sick and I'm super happy about that because I'm tired of fucking super viruses. So yeah. super grateful that nobody came sick. Anyways, um, yeah, that was horrible. Um, luckily though, a bunch of us had fans. Someone was handing out, um, little portable fans. I think it was Dred's way. And then my girlfriend Lana was fanning like the fucking line, which was really nice because she's amazing. Um, and I also brought my big fan and I was fanning other people because it was so bad in there. Um, that and, um, the fact that I know security was trying their best, but random ass men were coming into the conference who weren't supposed to be there. No wristbands, no badges. One of them, I think, threatened to shoot somebody. Another one, um, yeah, another one was like, oh, because um, they rejected their advances. It was like, oh, we're just a parcel or you're just like a hook. I'm just like, bitch, you were literally at a porn convention. Wow. Like, you are, are you dead ass right now? But wow. yeah, so that sucked. Um, that and getting approached by a PIMP the last day. Um, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, oh, just know that it was handled and he went away. But yeah, that was not fun. Also, like hearing about the XBIDS awards and how some of my friends were like treated there and knowing that that club in general would not let a single fucking black person in on a regular day or a fat person in a regular day did not sit well with me. So I kept my ass out of there. So yeah, there's a bunch of things where I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like someone or my friend Danny made a petition to get the awards out of there simply due to the fact that like all of that shit and then homophobia, transphobia, and fat phobia and just some even some of our colleagues apparently being shitty so i'm just like eh. my takeaway is it could have gone better yeah like i had fun with my friends and some of my colleagues but i also was like i don't really want to necessarily go into a place where again on a regular day i wouldn't be allowed to be in there not only am i fat i'm black i'm dark-skinned i have piercings in my face i have tattoos like yeah i'm good um but other than that yeah. miami's beautiful and 
the pool was great and I had a great time connecting with people, meeting new people, but they really dropped the ball on some things and I need them to do better. Do you, do you go to LA uh, conferences as well for X3? I, yeah, I do. I went to X3 um, last, what was it, last year or this year? Oh my God, time is weird. Um, <laughs> January, yeah. I think yeah, January. Okay, yeah, I went. Yeah, I went. And honestly, that one was like, not that bad. Like, there were a few things where I was like, hmm. But I still liked it better than than, than x -Biz. I also didn't, you know, have to worry about being harassed. And there was a lot of people in that convention. But there was also at the Palladium. So it was, like, big, but, like, not that big. Like, yeah. Um, I had fun, though. That was that was still fun. Like, stressful a little, but still, still fun, from what I remember. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know where they would host X-Biz if they didn't have it in Miami. Like, due to the fact that, like, you know, like, um, man, you can have, like, your ass out and um, walk around, like, in cute outfits in Miami. But the only issue is, is that it exists in fuck-ass Florida. Exactly, yeah. That's the whole problem. <laughs> like, and I love Florida, like, in terms of, like, the people that exist here. Like, some of them are great. It's just the powers that be fucking hate half the people that live there. So... Oh man, no, it's tough. I think too, like I, I get torn because the I think the LA conference is a little bit more has a little bit more structure and a little less chaos. But yes. the Miami conference has more independent creators, which is like so beautiful to see. Yes, agreed. Like it is tough. It is tough. That like oh god, that and like LA's expensive as hell, but so is so is Miami. So I'm kind of just like, but at the same time, Miami's also like. Oh God, no, it's, it's cheaper than LA. Like getting around Miami yeah. South Beach is way less chaotic, and does not make me want to eat myself into open traffic because <laughs> I'm from LA, and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally, totally. I think too, like, because one of the things about, uh, like, we talk about often on Sex or Sea is just the value in like attending conferences, like. I I would never want to throw one like that seems like an event planning nightmare for me. Um, but <laughs> the attending of them like there is value to be had, especially if you're really like taking charge of your own experience. Like if you're setting out to to meet other creators or to network or to you know meet someone from a company that you're interested in and feel them out or what ha what have you. Like it is the only kind of I guess space where we can be in person in person with each other and have that. So yes. I think it is powerful. Um, but I'm curious, like, is there advice that you would maybe give creators or individuals considering like a career in adults, like outside of just attending conferences or events, but like maybe actual strategies or things that you felt have been really helpful as you've pursued kind of the adult creator performer career? Hmm. Well, consistency is key. Um, being consistent is what will get you far. That's how I've gotten this far. Um, it took me years to get my Twitter up to this many followers, but I did that by myself, like because of engagement and interacting with other creators, like talking to people, networking and with people that you actually want to like network and connect with. Don't force it just because someone may have clout. Just work with people that you want to work with and think are cool and think you would vibe. Also, if you're going to get into this, for the love of all that is good, make sure it's what you want to do because the internet is forever and you cannot take that shit back. We are, like, we're not, we're, we're past that point. Like, AI is a thing, so you got to worry about that too. You've got to worry about, like, getting your stuff stolen and doing DCMA takedowns. You got to worry about, like, if you do, like, anything vanilla, like, you better make sure that um, you have, like, support, honestly. Like, I hope you have support. I hope you tell someone, do not keep this shit to yourself because it's not good for your mental health. Like, tell a trusted someone that you know isn't going to tell anybody, especially if you're not out to your family, your friends. Like, telling someone is helpful. Having safety, like, procedures in place, like, say if you're going to go out and do content with somebody that you don't know, like having a location on with somebody that you trust, like having their phone number like memorized um, or, you know, they're going to pick you up or they're going to take you there. They're going to go with you. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, especially now, like with how easy it is to dox people and stalk people like you need to have like you need to have backup. <laughs> 
Yeah. Like people need to know what you're doing, especially this job. Like, because unfortunately a myriad of things could happen and you just have to be careful. And that's like with any job, really, like, let's be real. Cause I've worked at the pet store and I've had people stalk me, but I've never had someone stalk me here yet. Knock on wood. Um, <laughs> hope that never happens. But yeah. yeah, there's just things that you need to think about in advance before you even start. Also, like, ha- I know it sucks to say, like, because I didn't start with it. I didn't start with the savings. I, g- I grew up poor. But having, like, a little cash, like, to, like, you know, get yourself started, like, you know, with, like, a tripod, a ring light, something like that is helpful. And also Amazon. I hate that site. And I hate what the... F- I hate that man. But if you don't have, you know access to nice things like that's the fastest way to get nice things is amazon so um yeah you just have to be very aware and make sure that this is what you want to do like i have to keep repeating myself like because i have friends right now who are like oh i'm interested in what you're doing and i'm like my sweet pea i love you but respectfully um right now i don't think it's the best time and two you can't do that. Like there are just some some of my friends. I'm like you. You cannot handle this. I'm surprised my ass even can, but I have really thick skin and have been through a lot. So I'm also not surprised. Um, but yeah, just be sure this is what you want. And if you are going to do that, like again, support system. A thousand percent. If you don't have it, I'll be your support system. <laughs> Oh, you're so sweet, Derek. I think that those are really, really important things. And that's like, that's also like a perfect place to end on because I, I think that should almost be the, the final message. Because I mean, I couldn't agree with that, everything you said more. Um, but at the same time, like, man, I'm having a lot of those conversations too about people still curious about getting into OnlyFans or getting into adult. And I'm like, mm, this is probably the hardest time. And even if you start now and see success, we might be out of business in a month. <laughs> like, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> like, not only are we worrying about like this shit, but like when Foster says the past, it was like, oh, we're fucked. Like, and now we're here. But yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah. If you want to actually like help, like, you should just be spreading the word about like what's going on because the entire like Northern Hemisphere needs to hear this shit. Yeah. A hundred percent. Learn how to be an ally. That's what we yes, really need. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Zuri, thank you so much for coming on and taking the time to do this today. Can you plug your socials, websites, anything, anywhere that anyone could find you on? Of course. Thank you so much for having me on. It was honestly a pleasure. Um, yeah. Like, this was great. And you can find me um, here on Twitter, obviously. Like, you can click on my username. Um, but on Instagram... You can find me at Z-U-R-E-E-L-O-O-V-E. That's my Instagram. And then you can also find me um, if you like, you know, if you're not like a creator in here and you're somebody who like is spying on me in the best way possible and being a freak, <laughs> you can find me at ZuriLove.com. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, that's, I think that's about it because I have my Instagram and my Twitter and my website and also like my OnlyFans, but that's all linked like in the link in my bio. So if you just click on that, you will find everything. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Zuri. This was awesome. I know everyone that tuned in got tremendous value out of this conversation. I really appreciate you. I sure hope so. I appreciate you too. Thank you so much. Thank you. We do have some um, requests I think want to uh, speak to you. So if you don't mind, if you have a moment, I'll bring them up to speak. I probably don't mind. (laughs) Okay, let me bring up Mistress. Quinn, you have the mic. First of all, Zuri, thank you so much for like being vulnerable and sharing all that stuff. It makes uh, it makes it easier to like be a person in this space. Super appreciate it. Um, and Melrose, thank you so much for your like accessibility. You like sent me a voice me- uh, memo um, answering some questions I had a little while ago, and I like span girl for like a week to my husband about it. Anyways, I really appreciate everything that you do. Um, I just have I just have like some quick practical questions about um collabing um and this is to like either of you or like anyone else that like has successfully collab okay I'm just gonna kind of read them through quickly because I'm like nervous and I just want to get all my questions out um how do you find people to collab with do you do that like on Twitter Insta like where do you reach out is it like the streaming site 
Um, and then is there like an unwritten code of conduct when reaching out to collab? Like, do you need to like tip or approach in a certain way? Would you suggest asking for collabs with creators that have like a similar follower count? And if so, like, would that be the similar follower count on the streaming platform or like on Twitter? I have way more followers on my streaming platforms. Let's see. And then I've got like when I'm talking about collabing, like what benefits can like I offer? Like there's obviously the like follower count and the audience that we can share, but is there anything else that would like I can say like, oh, we should collab and this is like what we'll both gain out of it. Um, and then last question, I'm, I'm sorry, I hope you have peace favor. How long to advertise for the collabs like before it happens, like would you suggest? These are really good questions. Sarah, you want to go first? I'm taking notes over here. Honestly, no, you go first because my ADHD has me like crap. Like I had to <laughs> run and find my pen and note. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm okay, so sorry. So <laughs> no, it's okay. Like I just like sometimes it's hard for me to like process things like fast. So I'm just like, oh God, I should have got my pen and pencil, my pen, my pen and paper. <laughs> okay. I, I wrote these down. So then we can pass them back and forth. Sarah. Maybe this will be even easier. Um. Oh yeah. So, that works okay so the, the first one um for collabs usually i'm collabing with people i know personally so like either i've met them at the conferences or i'm their friends through friends um i'm big on networking and like actually having friendships before just going into collabs when i can um so i just try to do things organically in that way when you're asking about similar size um i think there's definitely a benefit from a marketing standpoint to either be like earning similarly on your platforms or be similar in like subscribers or similar in following. Um, obviously there's a bigger benefit if you can collab with someone who has more than you uh, potentially, but the most successful creators I know, they're collabing with people of all sizes, to be honest. Like they're collabing with creators of all sizes, a lot of different looks. Um, and I think that they do that in an effort to see what sells well in their market and with their fans and then based on what sells well they just double down and try to do more of it that's essentially what i was gonna say oh yay <laughs> <laughs> that's what i do that's why you, you see like i collab with a few different people she says um, so casually when she has crash pad scenes <laughs> 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 rock star over here it took me a while to get there but yeah but yeah no no high key like yeah like Sometimes it's good to, like, you know, shoot with people who are, like, around your size. And then, for the most part, like, variety is king. Um, <laughs> the second piece that I have um, is how you ask or how to ask creators. I've, like, I've done this in a variety of ways. Personally, like, sometimes if it's a creator that I'm, I'm maybe less familiar with or we're only acquaintances still, then I'll ask them how they want to be approached for a collaboration, like, to see if they have a protocol um, sometimes I've even just put out a tweet like, hey, I'm, I'm going to be going to this conference. If you're also attending and you're interested in collaborating, like DM me. Um, I, I don't think there's a, a, a necessarily right or wrong way to ask unless the other creator maybe has a protocol that they prefer. But you can always ask them that. So that would be my take on that part. Oh, yeah, definitely. For the most part, like, I just, I'm, I'm very, like, I'm very polite. Um, and I'm just like, hey, like, I think your content is great and that like we would make um some pretty awesome stuff together like if you're interested in working with me like that would be cool and if not that's okay um i hope you have a great day yeah um the other piece of this question was do i tip the creators i do tip creators on their platforms from time to time just general uh to to support them or or especially if i'm trying to get their attention like that that's been really effective <laughs> like if i really want to network with them or if i really want to see if they're interested in in like collaborating in any way even if it's on like the sex or ceo side or or a, a, an event you know that's some company's trying to put on or what have you like i think tipping creators is always going to be well received um but i don't i also don't think it's always necessary just to start the conversation um but but I don't think it's a bad thing. Like you can never go wrong supporting a sex worker. <laughs> oh yeah, especially if you like your if you like this person, like and you like their content. Like support is great. I also have definitely tipped people before. It hasn't gotten their attention in the way of where they want to collab with me. I just did it because I thought their content was great and that they were hot, respectfully, um, and yeah. So no, not necessary, but it is cool. And then the. Uh, 
for the part where you said what other benefits can you offer besides just like the following and the audience potentially for a collab uh, I see a lot of and what I I've I have personally participated in myself was like uh, a lot of social exchange. So whether that's like doing reels together, TikToks together or tweets together or stuff like that, I think that there's a lot of value in, in social media exchange these days. And beyond that, like just the networking benefits, like I think a lot of creators, especially smaller creators that are starting out underestimate the value of their network. Like the creators that they might know is really powerful or maybe people at platforms that they've worked on that they might know, like everyone has value in their network. So there's just an, an, an like inherent value that everyone brings to the table that I think gets overlooked. But the big one is like the social stuff. I, I would say like the reels of TikToks you can do together. That's an, another added benefit to collabs. Agreed. Helps with engagement and helps you get yourself out there more as well. And they're fun. Yes. Yes. Especially now we have such fun formats. Like reels are fun. Like TikToks are fun. Yeah, I think they're super fun. And personally, uh, as for myself, like in my personal life, I've always wanted to like make and have made like funny little skits. So I definitely plan on doing that more and would love to do with other people. Mm -hmm. Even just even just collaborating for social, like maybe we don't have like content that we can overlap on. But like, I don't shoot boy girl, but I'm so down to make like boy girl social content, you know, same. It's so much fun. <laughs> so much fun. And then the last one is like, how long do you promote a, a collab? I'm, or I'm assuming like a scene before it comes out. Oof, that's a, uh, that's a good question. Um, honestly, for me, I start like talking about it, like maybe like a few days after it's shot. If, you know, it's around the time it's ready to go. And if not, then I'll wait a bit. Because sometimes I edit them myself. Sometimes I wait. And sometimes, like, depending on how fast to get done it's sometimes it's like within a day or two but it depends yeah I, I yeah i don't think i have like a fast and hard rule like i mean i have in the past but I, I, everything's so much in flux at least for me right now personally like within my creator career so sometimes like i'm promoting it with like posting a picture to twitter as like on our film day like as we're filming it i'll even put something out to start promoting it not that that hasn't backfired like not that we haven't you know been human and lost content before but um usually i would say like the week it's going up or maybe two weeks before it goes up i'll i'll try to go really hard on social promotion or public promotion of whatever the scene is or the content is um but i don't have like a solid rule for that okay thank you so much um it's it's kind of hard being like a lonely creator out in the wild like we work from home so we're not like it's not as easy to like network but like your tips are super helpful and thank you as well for creating this community Oh, you're so sweet. And it's just Quinn, too. Uh, even if you can't go to conferences and stuff, like, I didn't network or go to conferences for eight out of the 12 years of my career. So so don't think, like, even if you don't ever collab, that you can't build a career for yourself because you absolutely can as a completely solo creator. Exactly. Look at Miss Be Nasty. Yes, exactly. Okay, let me bring up. We have I am Detox. Let me bring you up to speak. Hi, Detox. Welcome, welcome. You have the mic. Hey, good afternoon. How are you today? Good. How are you? Good. I'm good. Hello. So... Um, the the topic that you guys were just discussing was actually um, was a was a topic that I hear a lot, and I think that that's a topic that really um, should be like a thin piece, like that should be discussed across um, a broader audience because I feel like a lot of people um, go across, you know, they they really go about like collaborating the wrong way, and I really think that a lot of times they think that it's the only way you know, to kind of like get your content out and to, you know, to really make it, you know, to get your platforms really going. And um, I think that a lot of times the so- the solo way, you know, in my opinion, solos can progress to that. But like, you know, solo content really gives your, your fans a chance to um, to really see who you are as a as a creator. And then I think just collaborating just kind of like adds like another like another, you know, patch on your shoulder per se. Um, but so I had a question, right? And and this is really, um, I, I really rarely come up in the spaces and ask questions, but one of my specialties is um, obviously audio. Okay. I'm in the audio ink world. So I'm just curious, right? Because I feel like that I've touched the majority of the platforms. I kind of gave up on Reddit 
because I keep getting kicked out of groups and like I feel like I'm reading the descriptions and like I'm trying to follow the rules, but it's just like I get kicked out and I just don't understand. So I kind of just said the hell with Reddit. But like, you know, of course, I post on OnlyFans. Um, I just did Loyal. Um, I'm thinking about incorporating it some way into many vids. But like, are there any other platforms that you think are really good for for the audio side. I mean, that's not the only type of content that I create, but it's like what I'm known for. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'm just trying to make sure that I haven't missed anything because like, I feel like I'm really good with the platforms, but you know, you don't, you never find out unless you ask, you know, your peers. So here I am. I love that. I'm, give me one second. I have a creator friend that is part of CEO squad who does primarily audio. And I know that they were just on a newer platform that's catered specific to audio. So I'm scraping her um, Twitter feed right now to see if I can't find that link for you. So bear with me. Thank you. Okay, it's this one. Um, Ocleo app, a platform empowering creators to monetize their voice and form deeper connections with their community. It's ohcleo.com, but they cater specifically towards audio. I'm, I'm not on there, so I, I can't speak to it uh, from like a personal, you know, use, you know, used it, monetized it kind of thing. But maybe that would be a good option. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Let me bring up Kia Harper. All right, Kia, you have the microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. So it's Kira. Thank you. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. So sorry. It's okay. Thank you. So do you want me to just have all my questions like all at once or do you want me to just ask them kind of one at a time uh do one at a time okay perfect so um so what advice so i'm like a newer i'm definitely a newer creator i do do like fs like fs sw but i am newer to just content creation in general i will say like probably like four days ago i started actually applying myself and being more just like um active consistent and just really applying effort into content creation because it's been something that i've kind of bounced around in my head but haven't been you know fully set on it until I just randomly logged into my OnlyFans after posting one video when I created it like back in February last year. And then I had like a thousand bucks waiting for me. And I was like, oh my God, I totally like bombed out on like all that money I could have made throughout the year. So I was like, well, let me start being more consistent on it. So do you have any additional advice other than just being consistent for somebody that is just starting out? Um, okay, so uh, so advice beyond just being consistent for someone that is just starting yeah. out. So aside, like consistency is going to be the, the actual key uh, here for sure. Consistency over a long enough time horizon, in my opinion. But the other component for that is just if you look at your content that you're creating, like think of it as digital assets or like almost digital real estate that will go on and live forever on the internet, making you money and, and producing for you as like a residual income earner. Um, and, I, and most people don't view their content like that because we're very much in a trend of fan site business model right now, like OnlyFans, like you're describing. But that content can still live on a clip store and make you money while you sleep. Or, you know, you can set it out in PPV DMs and it can make you money um, whenever you send those messages. But if you think of your library as a di bunch of digital assets, the value in, that they bring you in terms of monetization, it'll compound over time. So aside from the consistency and giving yourself enough time, um, and when I say enough time, like you should be thinking in, in like a decade is enough time. But the other really big component is to make a lot of content, like build up your library of assets. If like, I, I know a lot of creators don't make content every week um, or every day. I, I come from a business model of premium Snapchat and I did make content every day for many years. Um, not that that's a good fit for everyone, but it was a good fit for me. And it meant that I had a really robust library of content in a very short period of time. So the other piece that I would advise someone who's new is just make a lot of content, like put out a lot of content because like you can, you can drown out um, and I think overcome maybe a lot of, I guess a lot of challenges in adult by just making more content. Like you're going to get better at it faster because you're going to be making so much more of it. You're going to be able to distribute it wider because you're making so much more of it. You're going to have more PPV DMs you can send out because you're making so much more content. And that alone gives you so many more opportunities to monetize so many more touch points with your audience that I do think that that is a, a secret weapon. 
but it's also it's not like a fun easy answer like it's the hard part of the hard work you know so um that's what i would say uh zary might have something totally different but that would be my piece no honestly it's basically yeah like the same because i made a lot of content when i first started out and i was also like having a premium snapchat and that still exists but it's not used as much anymore because there's other things going on in my life so yeah making a lot of content um will definitely like exactly what you said like you know digital assets treating it like that because that will live forever and you'll be able to sell that forever there are literally some clips that i still sell because more people are gonna come and they're not gonna have seen those so that also is helpful thank you i actually love that i do find that OnlyFans is just one of those platforms that doesn't really bring traffic in itself and that you do have to a lot of the times funnel your traffic to the website. So luckily for me, even though I've only got like 2K followers on Twitter and I am fairly like a smaller uh, creator, I mean, within the past four days, I've managed to reach the top 10% already on the platform. And that's just because of the way that I've decided to mark my, like market myself by because I'm a full service uh worker i also um you know feel that just charging the premium for my for them to have that preview works for me because that's a niche for me being just a full service worker charging what i do um and so also it also helps me to kind of like like i do kind of sell my content for a little bit more as well too but i think that that has to do with your niche um and what you can do for that so I do feel that, you know, what you said is very useful, but also I think that learning how to funnel, like I know that some girls do Twitch, some girls do, you know, all of that stuff. I think that's also something that I've been realizing is super important. And I'm just thankful that I am in the position that I am to have a funneling effect, whether it's my advertisements, whether it's my Twitter, albeit it's small, but it does work out. And so um, thank you for that information on that. Um, now, when it comes to collaboration, I do want to collab at some point, um, but that is, you know, I feel like you have to network more, maybe eventually go to conventions, like you said. Um, but d when you do, do you tend to give a percent of your earnings from a collaboration on OnlyFans or how exactly does that work? Because if you're doing pay-per-view content, do you give the other person a percent like i don't really know how collaborations work but is there any sort of uh stipending that happens between the two of you so that's a really good question um for me personally i've never had it be like that um usually when i'm going into a collab we both um we're doing our documents for the collab we're setting our pricing on like when we release this video it's on this day for both of our pages we're selling it for this much on both of our pages we can send it in PPV, but it's for this much in both of our pages. But we're all we're both independently keeping our earnings. We're just agreeing on our sale points. This way, one person isn't like undercutting the other person in pricing, um, because obviously that would be a huge benefit uh, in terms of you know making more sales. So we're just I usually we're just agreeing on on those things. I will say there are um, companies likely coming to the market that could help split earnings like that on a scene potentially but they're, they're not here yet but for the most part all the creators i've worked with all the creators i know they're just agreeing on setting what their price points are for for which platform or which uh channel whether that's ppb or feed or clip store etc and then they just make sure not to undercut each other and also on the release date so that's how i've done in the past i don't know is there have you done it any differently oh yeah no I've, I've done it basically the same um and yeah we talk about pricing um so no one's undercutting each other and yeah exactly release dates um sometimes though like people will like pay you for like a video but that's something that's different um and that depends on like what you're trying to do so yeah for the most part you're all signing your forms you're putting that shit together and you're selling it separately hopefully that helps Kara. yes yes it does and um do you have so i know that you asked a question about finances and investment tips uh for creators and i didn't really get a, a good idea on on any information on that 
so is there does 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 anyone have any uh, financial or investment tips for a newer creator or just for any creator at any level in general? So, uh, I I have to say this for because Corey Silverstein listens to these, and um, I'm not an accountant and I cannot give financial advice, but um, I can speak to what I have done and also where I have royally fucked up, which would be save. 20% of everything you earn for taxes. When I first got into the adult space, I was a webcam model on my free cams and I was actually getting paper checks sent to me in the mail every two weeks. So since this was my like first time being an independent contractor, I didn't know that there was a difference. Like I didn't know, I just thought if you got paper checks, they were withholding. Like that was the association I made with taxes. So I ended up owing, I mean, that was my first year in, in adult and I was really successful for my first year. Um, and I owed like, like the hun- like way more figures than I care to admit. Um, so definitely save for taxes. That's the big one because every year after that, I've paid on back taxes until I finally got caught up and it was just a nightmare of dread hanging over my head. So don't make that mistake, please. And then the other piece is just set aside like a healthy savings. I would definitely recommend getting a bookkeeper. I found my bookkeeper on Upwork.com. Uh, funny enough, I find a lot of people I work with on Upwork. Um, they aren't adult friendly. I will also say that. So I wouldn't mention that until you're like privately on a phone call with someone interviewing them. But also there's um, someone newer in our space, the only consultant, I believe. Um, I have to find and share their information, but we work with them. We can DM you um, her intake form. So she does the tax side of things and also can help with some financial planning aspects. Uh, She comes highly recommended. So uh, we have that uh, resource we can make available to you. But in terms of just like overall financial literacy, I think it's really important to take the time to educate yourself. That has also never been easier with things like ChatGPT, where you can like write to it and be like, hey, act as a financial planner. This is my situation. And what would you advise? Like even something as simple as that can go a long way uh, for the average person. But definitely save for taxes. Definitely look to hire a bookkeeper. Um, our income's often coming from like 17 different places at any given time. So it can be really overwhelming to track and manage, especially on the expense side and knowing what's actually expensable. Um, so those would be the the biggest components, save for taxes and get the bookkeeper as soon as possible. And if you're not incorporated as a business, that would be another really big one. Zuri, do you have any additional? I really can't speak to like how people manage it even on the full service side, because that's a whole nother lens that I just don't have. Oh, high key. Basically it's, yeah, it's that. It's like literally saving 20% for your taxes and like also like having like an LLC um is very helpful um yeah exactly what you said do not do do not play when it comes to the tax man like i'm not gonna say my situation because it's embarrassing but i'm paying my taxes and it's fine but yeah exactly like when especially especially if you are like someone who has not been raised with money and you get money quick and you don't you, you, you've never experienced that before for the love of god get an accountant please <laughs> and i'm not even talking about like me personally like a little but um in general from what i know about um the good old irs from my family yeah they will come for you <laughs> they will come for you do not play with the tax man or you're gonna regret it so yeah, that's my advice is please do your research, please. Like as a full service sex worker who's been doing this for a long time, do your research, save your money or it will bite you in the ass. <laughs> and this is also coming from my mother because she, she's been paying back taxes and she's like, yeah, no. Tell all your little friends to please do the thing. <laughs> and she says that with love too. <laughs> So I only had two two more questions. Uh, if you can't answer them, that's fine. But the questions were, uh, do you re- recommend hiring an agent? And if so, how do you go about finding one? And then another, my other question, specifically like for Melrose, have you ever or would you ever collaborate with a full service sex worker? And why or why not wouldn't you? Okay. Um, so uh, let me start with the agent agency mm-hmm. question. Um, I don't have an agent. Um, there are very few agencies I would even consider working with in adult, maybe five or less. And those are the agencies that I, I've 
I've consulted for and I, I know what they do and I know that they really are creator first and they care about building brands for creators and they're they're doing things the right way, which I find to be very rare with agent with agencies specifically. Um, there are agents in adult, like, you know, there's the, the Hussy models and the, I can't even name that many because I don't work with any, but um, there are agents that I know creators and performers have had a lot of success with. It's just not the path I've taken. So I can't really speak so much to it. I prefer to be independent. I prefer to be very hands-on with my business. I prefer to be in, in the messages. I, I like to, I'm just controlling in that way. <laughs> like, I really care about this. And also like, I feel a, a bit of a responsibility to do so much and be so hands-on so that I can give information back on the sex work CEO side. So it just doesn't make sense um, for me personally. But there are, uh, you know, good agencies and good agents out there from what I hear and understand. Is there, do you want to speak to that before I take that, her last question? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, honestly, like, yeah, no. No agent for me. Um, I, yeah, there's not really a lot that I can say that, like, I would want to work with. Also, like, me personally, like being black and being fat and also being a loud mouth um <laughs> people a lot of companies um don't want to work with me and you know what that's okay because again like i have a big mouth and a lot of the companies that are out there can also be very crappy and are not for the performer they are only to exploit you and take your money your hard-earned money so for that i'm personally good and again like i'm a loud mouth and also these companies some of them be racist let's just be real but does that mean we can't be successful no it just means that it can be a little difficult but look at anna fox look at avery jane look at all these bad bitches who are black and brown and everything under the sun they can do it but a lot of them also don't have agents either and what does that say <laughs> that's a really valid point yeah and then uh, the last question was, I think, about collaborating in general and collaborating with a full-service worker. I don't know entirely if I've collaborated with a full-service worker. It's not something I ask, to be honest, uh, in you know, in preparation for a collab. Or, and I also try not to assume that just because someone might not be advertising that they're full-service or have, like, find me to you in their bio that they're not, not necessarily full-service. So I don't know if I ever have uh, thus far because it's just not something I inquire about. And would I in the future? Yeah, I'm open. For me right now, it's more so a problem of like doing collabs in general. <laughs> like um, right now, the way my day looks and this a lot of this will come out when we start putting up these blocks. But like I'm so focused on the sex work CEO side and that dominates so much of my time that new content in general on the Melrose side has been tough for me. Um, so making time to travel or do collaborations or if I'm traveling at a conference, having that time availability for collaborations at the conference is very rare. Like um, when I was at Expos this week, I had like four panels. I had the uh, ALO interview I hosted. I had the Sex Work CEO workshop. I had an executive dinner that I went to. I had uh, meetings I took and all of that was just for Sex Work CEO. Like there was no um, value necessarily for Melrose brand at, at this Expos conference in particular. Um, so it's really just hard with my time right now to do clubs, you know, point blank period. I would love to, because it would greatly benefit um, myself, my brand, um, my audience, but it's very difficult for me to make time at the moment. So that would be the only thing, but full service for me is not even part of the question. I, I could care less. It's just more about if we think we could benefit each other as creators. And, and I, I almost always think that that's the case. So yeah, that would be, that would be my answer. I, I love that. that. Thank I, you. Yeah, I didn't know if you were a, someone that collabs. I know like some people are like really big on collabing and some people aren't. So I'm not entirely sure. Like I'm kind of newer to everything. So I don't know like a lot of collaborators and I haven't, I've like I've newly followed you and your uh, CEO sex work um, company that you've started. So I do really appreciate all of the information uh, given as well. And um, yeah, I think that, you know, these these uh, types of conversations definitely need to be had. And, you know, I agree, like gatekeeping is not the way to, you know, really build a community or be successful. And I'm somebody that loves to help people on information and stuff, especially with like with the full service, it can be, you know, a bit more different and dangerous and things of that nature. And so it's really, really important just being that that solid person that people can rely on for information. So thank you for holding this conference and answering my questions. 
no, you're so sweet. And of course, not, I, I agree with that. And it sounds like we're super aligned in values. And I know Zuri is too, and everyone listening. And hopefully, maybe one of the people listening would be open to collaborating and something comes through even this way. Like, I know that that's happened before with some of our audience. So hopefully that happens for you, Kira. Thank you for all the great questions, by the way. Thank you. All right. So I guess we can um, start to wrap up the space. I've stolen enough of Zuri's time. <laughs> uh, thank you again, Zuri, for, for being here. We appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you for bringing me on. Um, this has been a lot of fun. And also, like, I love um, helping people, honestly, and, like, spreading love and information in the community because it's necessary. Because um, I remember back when I was, like, not knowing what the fuck I was doing, like, at, like, 18, 19 years old. Um, so, yeah, having a wealth of information like for the community is is great and brings joy to my heart because it'd be hard out here yeah it is hard out here no we appreciate you i think um so i guess as we kind of wrap up this space uh thank you everyone who came and who listened and who came up to speak we uh we love when you guys come up to speak and I do want to kind of shamelessly plug, we do have new content over on our YouTube channel. Most importantly, it is the latest video, Destroying Age Verification in Less Than Five Minutes, where I expose the truth behind these policies and how they pose a real threat to both adult performers and consumers. Um, this is a Sex Work CEO exclusive video. In the link in the description of that YouTube video, you're going to see the link to oppose age verification in any state. So you can click on that link in the description. It's going to take you to the take action page where you can select your state. It'll autofill the opposing um, message and then you're just going to sign it uh, with your information. It takes less than three seconds and it, this is the main thing that we can all do as performers and in adults to make a difference. And then of course sharing that link with anyone and anyone who is an ally to us uh, at this time and in this mission. Also want to say a huge thank you to everyone who subscribed to SexWorkCO's Telegram bot already. If you haven't heard, we do have this Telegram bot that is essentially sends you content inspiration and captions you need for your feed, PPV, locked messages, and clip store descriptions, etc. The idea is our research to be highly trendy and desirable, and the uh, captions are optimized with calls to action so that you can increase your earning and unlock potential with every one. We push the Telegram bot daily to your Telegram account around 10 a.m. Central so that you no longer have to waste any time researching, planning, or coming up with content ideas or captions. The bot takes care of all of it. And if you're not a Telegram user, we do have PDF versions of this content inspo and captions bot, except in PDF form where you can download them right on our shop, sexworkceo.com forward slash shop. We launched the stored website and we even have free downloads there for you as well. In addition to others like unlock sales scripts, overcoming objections, scripts, anything that can help you close the deal with fans and PPVs. And like I said, we do have free downloads there available too. So if you'd like to get a taste without spending a dime, you can just head on over and take advantage of that on sexworkceo.com forward slash shop after this space. I also want to take this opportunity just one more time and remind all of you listening about my other company, SWR Data, in case you are not familiar. SWR Data is on a mission to survey adult creators like you, and we want to hear your feedback about the challenges you face and how the adult industry can better serve your needs. Our goal is to collect your experiences, your opinions, and your observations about the current state of the adult industry, and then we'll use this to advocate for the necessary changes to make it a better place for us, the creators. The reality is that a lot of people in power have never been creators and simply do not have the lens to know what our needs are and SWR data is gonna be that lens. However, I can't do that alone and I genuinely need your help. So for that reason, we're inviting any creator who's willing to participate in our qualifying survey, which helps us understand your expertise as an adult creator. So by taking this survey, you can then start participating in future paid surveys. Our ultimate aim is for the CEO squad to have an additional income stream through SWR surveys alone. Your experience as a creator is very, very valuable, and we think it is time that you got paid for it. So if you're interested in participating and getting paid for future surveys, comment to let us know you're interested, and we will send you a DM on Twitter or Instagram, and we will get you that qualifying survey link so that you can join us in this mission. Lastly, but most importantly, I want to emphasize that all of the information we put out on Sex Work CEO, we put out for free. 
because we believe in this idea that the more financially successful creators are, the more resources we'll have as a community to do things like lobby Congress, impact policy, organize, and more. So if you found value in what you heard here today or the tweets that you've engaged with, please, please, please consider sharing any of our stuff to make this journey easier for your own adult creator friends. Our only ask is that you retweet and share so that we can help as many people as humanly possible. This is going to bring us to the end of today's space. Huge thank you everyone again who joined. Remember, all of these are turned into blog posts over on our website, sexworkceo.com. So just head on over there later this week to revisit anything we talked about in today's episode. So thanks again for joining me today, CEO Squad, and I will see you all one week from now. It would be absolutely incredible if you rated this podcast five stars and left a little review. We want to get this podcast to as many adult creators as possible, and you taking a second to leave a couple stars in a review really helps us do that. Thanks so much.